Skyrim modding can be overwhelming, especially when you're just starting. So today I want to go over some essential modding tips and tricks that will help you have a smooth modding experience right from the beginning. And before you even start modding, it's important your Skyrim game folder is clean. What I mean by that is if you've ever modded in the past, some files may have been changed, added or even deleted from your game folder, which may cause some issues down the road. For Steam users, you can verify the integrity of your game by right clicking in Steam, going to Properties, then Installed Files and selecting Verify Integrity of Game Files. This will verify all the correct Skyrim files are in your game folder. Now this will update your Skyrim to the latest version, so if you have downgraded your game, you will want to skip this step. The other method is just to reinstall your game from scratch. Also, it's recommended you don't have Skyrim installed in your Program Files folder, which is generally the default installation path for Steam. This is because some modding tools may not work when installed there. Again, to change this is very easy. Just right click in Steam, go to Properties, Installed Files, and select Move Install Folder. This will bring up a drop down menu of your available Steam storage locations. If you only have one location, you will need to go into Steam settings and create another storage location on your computer. Once your Skyrim game folder is all ready to go, another thing you must also check is the version number of your Skyrim you intend to mod. To do this, right click your Skyrim executable, go to properties and find the details tab, then look for the version number. For me, this is Skyrim version 1.6. 0.1170, which is probably the same for the most of you as it's the most up-to-date version. This is incredibly important and you should write it down somewhere so you don't forget, because a lot of mods have separate versions for each version number so you must install the correct mod that correlates to your Skyrim or it will not work. The reason why there are so many Skyrim versions is because Bethesda likes to update their game which creates a new version number and breaks a lot of mods, which then need to be updated again. To avoid these game updates, there are a number of ways including manually stopping updates on Steam, but the method I find best with 100% certainty is the stock game method. This is where you create an exact copy of your Skyrim game folder away from Steam. Literally all you do is select all the files in your game folder, then copy and paste into a new folder, I just call mine stock game, but you can name it whatever you like. And then the important step is to point all your mod manager executables, such as the base Skyrim executable, Skyrim launcher, and SKSE to the files inside the stock game folder instead of the Steam folder. This means Steam cannot touch this folder and prevents any future updates. It also keeps your original Skyrim game folder completely clean and free to update at any time. This step is optional as it's not 100% necessary, but I will link a good step-by-step -step guide on how to create and set up your own stock game folder for Skyrim if you're interested. When you do start installing mods, the vast majority will come from the site called Nexus Mods, and one rule that everyone must follow is you must read the mod description of every mod you install. Often there is valuable information here, such as installation and load order instructions, compatibility notes with other mods, or patches required that will save you a lot of headache in the future. You may also find that the problem you are having is because you didn't read the mod page and actually has a very simple fix. Also, for every mod you install, make sure you check the requirements tab of that mod and that you actually have all the requirements for the mod to work as intended. Also note that sometimes there are hard requirements that must be installed for the mod to work and other times there will be soft requirements that are optional and only needed for a certain feature or extra content. You should also check the mods that require this file section which will outline any mods that require the mod you are installing. This is useful as it will usually link to any patches you may need or help you discover mods that build upon and enhance that particular mod. A great example is the high quality Ivy Replacer which is a great mod by itself and is required by a bunch of other mods 
that add the same high quality IV to more objects and game. Nexus also lets you see a download history of all the most recent mods you have installed. So if you forgot a mod or want to refer back to something, you can quickly and easily check the mods you have installed in the past. Some more general modding tips include enabling file extensions in your file explorer. To do this, just go to the view tab and check the box that says file name extensions. This will tell you at a glance what each file is, for example an INI, configuration file or an executable so you can easily find the right file without making any mistakes. Regarding configuration or INI files, a lot of mods will ask you to edit these to make certain changes to that mod. By default, these will open using the notepad, but you should download and install a program called Notepad++, which is free and is basically an upgraded version of Notepad with many more features and ease of use. You are also less likely to make mistakes when using Notepad++, as it's much more obvious what you need to edit. You should also only try to install 5 to 10 mods at a time and then test them out in game. If you install say 100 mods all at once and something goes wrong or your game crashes, it is a lot harder to find the culprit than if you just installed 5 mods, because then you know the issue comes from one of those 5 mods. If your game is crashing repeatedly, make sure to install a crash logger, which will produce a log as to why your game is crashing and point you towards the mod that may be causing the issue. Also as a general rule of thumb, you shouldn't be installing and uninstalling mods on an old save game, as this can and will break your save. Now in general, some mods are okay, such as a texture, animation or audio file, but if you're attached to a certain save file in Skyrim, I would recommend against changing a bunch of mods. Everyone should also be using a mod manager to install their mods and manage their mod list. There are two popular mod managers at the moment called Mod Organizer 2 and Vortex. Each of these take a slightly different approach to modding and while I would recommend using MO2, both will work just fine and make modding in general significantly easier. For MO2, the basics are fairly intuitive. On the left pane you will see all the mods you have installed and on the right pane are all your plugins associated with those mods. Each pane is organized in their load order from top to bottom, meaning any files at the bottom will get loaded last and will win any conflicts with other mods. To change your load order, all you need to do is click and drag each mod to where you want. You can also highlight multiple mods and move them all at the same time. Or if you know exactly where you want a certain mod to be in your load order, you can simply right click send to and select priority then input the number you want it to be. The plugins tab is the same but it also has an auto sort tool powered by loot that will automatically sort your plugins based on a set of rules. Now this is great for newcomers or a short mod list but it isn't perfect and as your mod list grows it may not get everything correct and you will need to manually adjust the load order. After running loot it will also mention any mods that may need to be cleaned or tell you if you're missing a certain patch, which again is a great tool for beginners and experts alike. For me personally, I use Loot to initially sort my plugins and tell me of any issues and then I manually adjust my load order as needed. Another feature that I highly recommend is the use of separators, which are used to separate your mod list into categories, which can then be collapsed and expanded with a click, and are incredibly helpful for managing a large mod list. To create one, just right click, go to all mods, select create separator above, then name it whatever you like, for example textures or combat. You can then move all the mods related to that category into each separator for a highly organized and easy to use mod list. You can also change the color of each separator if you wish. Then once you have your load order organized exactly how you want it to be, it's highly recommended you use the backup feature which will save your current load order of mods. To do this, simply click the symbol up the top and MO2 will create a backup. The golden arrow to the left will then allow you to revert your load order to a backup you have previously created. This is great if you want to test your load order with different combinations 
or accidentally dragged a mod where it shouldn't be without knowing, and it can be done on both the left and right pane of your modded load orders. Some other simple features of MO2 include, if you want to open a mod folder, you can just right click and select open in explorer, great for accessing the mod files. Or if you want to visit the nexus page of a mod, again you can just right click and select visit on nexus. You can also double click any mod in your load order to open a more detailed interface with a bunch of extra features, including being able to see what files are conflicting with other mods, or the ability to edit INI files directly through MO2. Another feature that is probably a little more advanced but incredibly useful is the ability to hide specific mod files, stopping them from being loaded into the game. I often use this for texture or UI overhauls to hide a certain element of the mod that I do not like. To do this, again double click the mod and go to the file tree tab which will show you all the files in the mod. For a real example is the Boreal Whiterun mod which overhauls the visuals of Whiterun, however I don't particularly like the Whiterun road texture so inside the file tree I found the textures that relate to the Whiterun road which in this case was the file named wrstonefloor02. Also if you didn't know, MO2 can actually open these .dds files so you can see what any texture looks like very easily. Then just select all the files related to that texture, right click and select hide. Those files will then have a .mo hidden added to the name and now when I open up my game, the old white run road texture will be gone and another mod higher in my load order will fill in the gap. This is great for creating a very personalized mod list and using mods even though you don't like a certain aspect. To revert the change, just select unhide on the same files that have been hidden. Having profiles is another fantastic MO2 feature that beginners may not know about. Above your load order, you will see a drop down menu where all your modding profiles are kept. If you select manage, you can then create a new profile with all your mods disabled or an exact copy of an already existing profile which can then be edited separately from your other profiles. This essentially allows you to have completely different load orders all in the same MO2 installation which you can interchange between very easily. For Vortex, the other popular mod manager, which I admit I'm not that experienced with, also has a lot of similar features to MO2, including the ability to open the mod folder of each mod by simply right clicking and selecting open file manager, or opening the Nexus mod page by selecting open on Nexus, a simple feature that will save you a lot of time. One of the big differences between MO2 and Vortex however, is that Vortex will automatically sort your mods using the Loot integration tool, and as I mentioned before, Loot doesn't always get it right, so it's important you learn to apply rules to your load order in Vortex so you can force a certain mod to load after another. I do this in the plugins tab, where at the top you can see the manage rules option, here you can search for any plugin you have installed and apply a rule with another plugin from your load order. Vortex also has the option for multiple profiles within the same installation of Vortex, but it is disabled by default. To enable this feature, go to the settings tab and find the option that says enable profile management. After enabling, a new tab will pop up called profiles that will let you create new and switch between existing profiles. You can also download multiple collections using this method as well. Moving on to Nemesis, which is a modding tool used by many for special animations and I have a small quality of life tip when using this tool. When you first launch Nemesis, you will get a list of mods that are installed by default that you don't actually need and just clutter up the interface. So if you open up the Nemesis mod folder, then select Nemesis Engine and the folder named Mod, here you will find all those default mods. Just select them all and either delete or hide. Now when you launch the Nemesis Engine again, only the mods you have installed that require Nemesis will show up in the list, making it much easier to know which ones you should be selecting and which ones you shouldn't. SSE Edit or XEdit is another modding tool that you should become familiar with and the advice here is to just learn the basics. 
This tool has so many great features, such as being able to clean mods, which is extremely easy using the auto clean function, or how to find conflicts between mods in your mod list that cannot be fixed by simply adjusting the load order, and then making your very own simple patch to fix the conflict. While this may sound intimidating, it is actually a very simple process, and I will link a couple of guides by some very smart YouTubers who know and go over this modding tool much better than me. Before we finish, I do want to mention some advice in regards to actual gameplay enjoyment, and firstly is to always prioritise gameplay over graphics when you're modding. Adding a lot of visual mods and extra clutter to the game will be taxing on your PC, and it's always better to have a fun game that runs over 30 or 40 frames than a beautiful game that only runs at 15 FPS. Also, a lot of visual mods actually have an option for performance that is just a reduced version of that mod and you should consider downloading this version if you are using a laptop or a PC that's not super modern. And the other piece of advice is that for a lot of people modding the game becomes the hobby instead of actually playing Skyrim. So if your intention was to play modded Skyrim then don't forget to actually play the game because it can become really addicting to check the Nexus every day and keep installing new mods and then forget to play the game. And that brings us to the end of this video. Hopefully you found some information useful and that you can apply in the future for your modding journey. Of course, there are many modding tips and tricks out there, so if you have a wee nugget of information, please let us all know down below. Thank you for watching, happy modding, and I will see you again next time.